Right, here we go with some calculations with decimals, starting out with quite an easy one. Hopefully you can all multiply by 100. Everything is moved across two columns to the left. Everything gets bigger by two powers of 10. So the four, which is a 40, becomes 4,000. So we have 4,130. Hopefully that one is okay. Next, 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. The simplest thing to do here is to consider four times six. So just ignore the decimal places. Um, obviously that is 24. Now we just look back at the original sum and see that it has two digits after the decimal points. And we want the same total number of digits after the decimal point in our answer. So we don't want 2.4 or 24, we need 0 0.24. Uh, part C, this is subtraction, and this is basically a test of your standard um, subtraction using the column method. That's by far the easiest and most reliable way to do this. So we set it out the normal way. Uh, make sure you line up the decimal points so it looks like this. Um, notice that the 7 hasn't got anything to be subtracted from, so we need to put a 0 in there above it. And we subtract in the normal way. So 7 from 0 won't go, so we need to borrow from the 2. So the 2 becomes a 1, and the one that we've borrowed makes our 0 into a 10. 10 take away 7 is 3. Next, we have to take 3 from 1, and that again won't go, so we borrow from the 5, make that into a 4, and my 1 becomes 11. 11 take away 3 is 8. Then simply put the decimal point where it should be and finish off with 4 take away 1, which is 3. And there you have your answer. OK, next we've got a similar question to 1b. It's a multiplication um, and just with bigger numbers, different numbers. So we're going to consider the multiplication without any decimal points and then think about decimal places. Now I'm going to do the actual multiplication two different ways because people have their own favourites. I'll start with the traditional way, um, which is going to be setting out in column form. So we write 256, usually with the bigger number on top, multiplied by 16. And uh, step one is going to be to multiply 256 by 6. So 6 times 6, that's my first part. That's obviously 36. The 6 goes there, the 3 goes up there to be put in the next column along. And I now do 6 times the 5, which is 30. But given I've already got a 3 there, that's 33. Um, and then finally, the 6 times the 2 is 12. But we've already got a 3 in that column, so that makes 15. So you write the 15 there. And that first line is what you get if you do 6 times 256. Um, next, we're going to multiply the 1 by 256. Um, but given that the 1 is really a 10, uh, we start by putting a 0 there. And then we simply do 1 times 6, 1 times 5, and 1 times 2. So that line is quite easy, but it works the same way if you've got a digit other than 1, as long as you put the 0 there. And then finally we add up the columns. So 6 plus 0 is 6, 3 plus 6 is 9, 5 and 5 is 10, so put the 1 down there, and 1 and 2 and another 1 makes 4. So that's what the sum comes to if you don't have any decimal places. Let's work it out another way using the grid method because um, I know um, a lot of you use this method. So we'll split 256 uh, into 250 and 6, and make that into a table. Down the other side, we'll split 16 into 10 and 6. And we simply multiply uh, each thing by each other thing to fill the table. 10 times 200, 10 times 50, 10 times 6. And then on the bottom row, uh, 6 times 200 is uh, 1,200. 6 times 50. 6 times 5 is 30, so that's going to be 300. And 6 times 6 is obviously 36. Now you need some way to add up these six numbers. Uh, I tend to favour having a column at the end that we call total. Uh, so I can add up each row. Um, and then once I've added up each row, I can add up those two totals. So the first row comes to 2,560. The second row uh, is 1,536. Um, now it probably hasn't escaped your attention that these are the same two numbers that we had over here in the traditional method. And that's really because these are two ways of looking at exactly the same kind of calculation. So naturally when we add those up we get the same thing, 4096. So that's the first part done, but this was our sum, 25.6 times 1.6. So in total we've got two digits after the decimal points. So in our answer we want to have the same thing, so it's going to be 40.96, and there we have our two digits in the answer. You can check that that makes sense by doing a rough estimate. 25 times 1.5 is about 40. Okay, question three. 
Um, this is probably the most difficult decimals question on this sheet, um, dividing these uh, horrible looking numbers. Um, the key here is to make it into an easier sum, okay? And we're going to do it in such a way that the answer won't need changing afterwards. So uh, the trick, first of all, is to think of it as a fraction, okay? A division is basically a fraction, or rather a fraction is a division. So I can write it as 147.6 divided by 0 0.24. And I'm going to change that. I want to have an integer on the bottom. That would be much nicer. So if I multiply numerator and denominator by 100, that will achieve this. So I'll end up with uh, 14,760 over 24, or divided by 24. And that's nicer. I can deal with that, and I'll just remind myself that uh, that that's the same as doing a division. So 14,760 divided by 24. Um, now you may have your favorite method for this. I suppose really it's a choice between um, long and short division or some sort of ad hoc method. Uh, this is the way that I would do it. Okay, I set it out like short division, um, but I've got a big, I've got lots of space for remainders because with a big number like 24, um, you might end up with quite big remainders. Also 24 is a large number. You don't know the times table. Uh, so it's probably a good idea to write the first few numbers in the times table down at the side. You can do that fairly quickly. Um, so we begin 24 into 1, doesn't go. 24 into 14, doesn't go. But 24 into 147, you can see it goes 6 times. And 6, 24 is 144, so the remainder is 3. 24 is into 36, uh, well obviously that goes once. Um, and the remainder is going to be 12. And we can see from our times tables that... Uh, 24 into 120 goes exactly five times. So we've done the sum, the answer is 615. But the key thing is, what we, when we're messing around up here, we didn't change the value of this fraction, we just changed the way it looks. So the answer doesn't need changing.